a lot of jobs will be affected by AI. In a scale of 1 to 100, 100 being the most positive. I see it about 75, the natural course of events. AI was invented to take away from us, to wake us up, to say that you can't possibly exist to draw the same picture every day because AI is better than you. The way in which you make a marketing brochure is not buying a stock photo using Photoshop, but using your words vividly describe what you want and have AI draw it. ピボットの竹下です。今日はですね、カイフーリーさんという、えー、世界的な人工知能の権威に話を聞きます。えっ、ー、と、元 Google 中国の社長であり、今、Microsoft とか Apple でも重役を務めてたんですが、最近ですね、こちらの AI2041 という AI の予測の、まあ、SF と、えー、と科学書の中間のような本を出したんですけど、まあ、AI によって人間の仕事 40% が置き換えられるという、そういう悲観的な見方もありつつですね、結構人間にとってポジティブな影響があるんじゃないかっていうことを主張している人なんで、早速話を聞いてみたいと思います。So, uh, Kai Fu san,、uh, welcome to Pivot, welcome to our show. Thank you. Thanks very much. So, I just、uh, read your wonderful book, AI 2041. It's fascinating because it's a mixture of science fiction and scientific analysis combined. It's a very unique book. And you kind of touched upon a lot of subjects such as insurance, you know, AI, even teaching us not to smoke or even telling us who to date or In Seoul,、uh, AI is、uh, educating our children. And also in Tokyo,、uh, people, fans are very、uh, into or pitching themselves into、uh, virtual idols, which is fascinating. And also、uh, on top of that,、uh, a lot of jobs will be affected by AI. So, in a scale of one to 100, 100 being the most positive, how do you see the future in 2041? How optimistic are you? Yeah, I see it about 75. Uh, oh. Which is mostly optimistic,、mm -hmm. and that reflects the ending of the book, of the stories. Most、mm -hmm. of them are pretty positive, but some are, have concerns at the end.、Uh, the reason is this I think I realized that today most people are very concerned about the so called externalities of AI.、Mm -hmm. That AI is great technology, but it can be used by bad people, it can cause problems like privacy, bias. Not explainable,、uh, fake news,、um, content that's not real, makes things up.、Uh, and, um, and I think the key thing to remember are the following two things. First, that all technologies eventually do a lot more good than bad to the society. That includes uh, electricity um, uh, And、uh, electromagnetic wave,、uh, combustible engine, nuclear power. Yes, they can be used to do bad things, but mostly they do great things for humankind because eventually, because I believe human nature is generally good、mm. and a lot more people doing, who want to do good. And also, there's deterrence and、um, laws for people who do bad. So, as a result, technologies tend to. Do more good than bad for societies. That's the first point. The second point is that, yes, today we see a lot of potential issues with AI, but we saw that with every other technology too. With electricity, people were concerned about electrocution. With、um, internet, it brought viruses to people's machines. But eventually, there were ways to overcome these problems. And I think the way to overcome most technology problems.、Uh, Is still through technology. So, electrocution was solved by circuit breakers.、Um, internet viruses were solved by virus、uh, detection software. So, I, I think we also need to have faith in human ingenuity to come up with technological ways to solve the problems brought upon by technology. And of course, what technology cannot solve can be perhaps addressed by regulations. So, with these two beliefs, Uh, is what led me to believe that the outcome will be mostly good. And I would say, you know, 75 is a reasonable number. We may even do better.、Um, but if we, don't, if we don't go in with our eyes open, if we don't、uh, become aware of problems of AI, or if we all become, you know, feeling hopeless about AI being good. Or if we're all disappointed thinking AI is bad, or if we don't develop the technological 
solutions to solve the problems, then it could drift much lower than 75. So it's a 75 with a substantial variance, depends on whether we get our act together or not, mm. which is what the book, AI 2041, is it, solve, it helps the problem of awareness, that the more people are aware, AI is a great technology, it can do a lot of good, it has some problems, we need to work on the problems, the more people feel that way, the, the higher the number will go over time. Mm, it's interesting because in your book about the golden sparrow and the silver sparrow, AI, AI was a key figure to connect the bonds between the twins. So I think it's a good point. Yes, yes. I think AI is a wonderful thing, uh, but it's important to remember the good things done by AI, like the example you gave, uh, required human behind the scenes. Uh, AI doesn't necessarily have any desire to do good or bad. So if we have good people programming, using, applying, teaching AI, then AI will be better for the society. If we have bad people who deploy it for evil or greed or um, just um, being mean um, or uh, uh, being greedy and want to make money and don't care about people suffering, then AI will cause more harm. So it's really more about a neutral technology whether it's being used by good people or bad people. Hmm. In your book, um, you mentioned about three areas which AI cannot do, which is um, empathy, uh, creativity, and uh, dexterity. So to me, it felt like um, you're talking about kind of a wake up call or a general will um, that AI is coming to us and making us realize what human beings are or what we are mean, uh, what it means for us to be in Earth. Do you agree with that point? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, in history of the human race, where we the humans are continually being brainwashed by religion, by society, by uh, powerful people. And um, through the brainwashing, we sometimes lose, the, lose sight of who we are. For example, in the Industrial Revolution, a phenomenal period of time where uh, technologies and people and workers and assembly lines helped make uh, things much cheaper and reach many more people. But the way in which, let's say, an automobile was made was by hand. It was by hand very boring. And also the assembly line made the job very boring. Before, making a car was like an artisan work. One person carefully, you know, seal uh basically sew the leather right. another polish the door and they really love and, and they work on all aspects of the car so it takes a long time maybe months or even longer to make a car which is like a work of art Klein says no it's much more efficient for each worker to just pound the nail day after day or uh, tighten the screw or you know wipe the glass so by having each person do one very, very repetitive task, efficiency is created. However, the cost of that efficiency is that people's jobs have become repetitive, boring, and maybe even demeaning. Hmm. So what the, the capitalists, the people who benefit from selling cars and make money, they started making stories, stories that says, hey, um, work is the purpose of your life and, and uh, making money will allow you to provide for your families so your children can have a great future. So it is an honorable thing and it is who you are. So as a result, people became brainwashed that working is the essence of our being. Hmm. And, and I think that isn't necessarily the grand truth. For a period of time, that was an economic requirement for assembly lines to work. You gotta get people to be motivated despite mm -hmm. the their work is boring. So capitalists started to brainwash. Similarly, some religions started to brainwash people so they maintain so stability in a society. So that brainwashing, I think it is time to really, um, to really wake up mm -hmm. because we are in a very unique era when AI will do many work for us giving tremendous, creating tremendous economic value. So instead of paying taxes, we may be taking universal basic income. 
So instead of having to do routine work, we might be able to do exciting, fun work that we actually love. But if our belief is that work defines who we are, keeping busy is the goal, then it's maybe not so fulfilling for someone to write poetry and take photographs or pursue a hobby um, or help elderly in, in their lives. So I, I think it's important to ask, the, is finally we've reached a moment in the human history development when we'll create so much wealth that no one will be hungry and poor again. And in that environment, it's important to ask the question, what is it that makes us humans? Then develop a society that can, that can help us um, rejoice around the things that make up who we are. And mm. it's time to relieve us from the burden that we are our work. It may be a different definition for each person. Some people, maybe it's their purpose in life is to experience things. Other people might be to create things. Other people might be to bring joy to other people. So finally, AI brings all the goodness to the world. We need to know what we inside want to do. We also need to know what things are we good at. In the industrial age, industrial revolution, we were told by pounding the same nail you know, thousands of times a day or tightening the same screw thousands of times a day, that defines who we are. Um, that cannot because we'll never beat AI at it. Similarly, we saw recently new technologies that can draw paintings and can make up photographs much better than people can do. Right. So it's better than people in many, many things. So I think a challenge of that is we could say, oh, AI is taking away that job, AI is changing that job. But the good thing is maybe we as humans were never brought to this earth or evolved on this earth for the purpose of tightening a screw, uh, repetitively drawing a picture. There are higher purposes of being here. So it's important to know not only what we love, but also what we're good at. What we're good at are things like creativity, inventing new things, strategic, uh, thinking about strategy, brilliant ideas, breakthrough ideas. That's on the one side. Then there is empathy and love and self-awareness wanting to bring warmth to other people's lives. That's another set. Mm -hmm. And then is with our amazing body, do things that others could not do. With our dexterity, make things that AI cannot make. So it is time that we understand and find and hone and treasure and rejoice around the things that we can do. And, and I think the definition of what we, it is that we uniquely as humans can do is that it's whatever that AI cannot do. That's what we can do. Mm -hmm. So maybe the natural course of events, AI was invented to take away from us, to wake us up, to say that, hey, you can't possibly exist to draw the same picture every day because AI is better than you. Mm -hmm. You can't possibly exist in the world for the purpose of screwing the same, um, you know, tightening the same screw every day. And it is time for you to find something else to do. So I think now that we understand AI is good at many, many things, and this, they're going to get even better. So we as humans, whether we do that as a job, we should be quite ready to put it down and find something new. If we're about, we have, if our children are about to go to school, it's important they realize they don't go into studies of things that AI will do much better than us. So it is a time of a wake up call, a time of reckoning, of um, enlightenment, that we are on this earth to do what we love and to do what we're good at, mm -hmm. not things that are repetitive routine and can be done by a machine or software. When there's chat GBT and making poems or uh, AI creating uh, images or even movies or music, um, I'm afraid that after 2041, there will be some like a cost and at the top, there'll be elites that are people who can be creative and do what they want and work with AI or collaborate with AI. But the rest of the mass may not be so creative or may not be you know, uh, enthusiastic of doing something. And they may 
have nothing to do. Do, do. do you believe that? Or do you think every single person in the earth, are, everyone is creative? Uh, no, something mm. in between. Mm. No doubt the people who are incredibly talented, mm -hmm. creative, are the ones who will harness the AI tools, tremendous value, and uh, bring phenomenal self-satisfaction. But I would also argue everyone can improve themselves by learning the AI tools. It's like uh, in the early days of Photoshop, mm -hmm. every would have learned to use Photoshop, but some chose not to, and now they're falling by the wayside. In the early days of Microsoft Word, every reporter should have and could have used Word to type in their articles, but they didn't. Some didn't, and they may have fallen by the wayside or at least reduced their productivity. So we're now entering a new revolution where every tool will be reinvented for many, many purposes. So in the future, a word document, a word application will not only allow you to type, but it will type for you, provide ideas for you, do a first draft for you, help you do iterations. So if a reporter doesn't learn the tool, get on top of it, become better with the um, human plus AI symbiosis, then that reporter will probably fall behind by the wayside. Similarly, in the future, the way in which you make a marketing brochure is not by buying a stock photo using Photoshop, edit it, put in some fonts, words, and people, and shadows, and make a brochure, but using your words, vividly describe what you want and have AI draw it, and using the AI tools, iterate, add, improve, and make the brochure a suitable one for you. So... People who are used to drawing, taking photographs, using, photo, using Photoshop, now have to learn the new tools so they, they can get on with the times. So I do think there is a, more of an opportunity than just for the top few percent. Mm. I think most people who create content today can embrace the new tools empowered by AI and up-level their contribution and value. So that's the first point. Mm. Um, point is that it's not, not the case that all jobs require creativity to be retained. Mm. What part, as we discussed, is empathy, compassion, love, EQ, winning trust. These are things that AI cannot do today. Even if AI could try to emulate them, uh, people don't want AI to do that job. Mm -hmm. These of uh, elderly caretaker, um, hospitals, nurse, and doctors, and teachers who nurture, homeschooling teachers. Uh, this would be also at uh, luxury jobs like um, uh, concierge and uh, people who come to your home and cook and who deliver phenomenal services. So, so as products are more and more made by machines, services can only be provided by people. Because if I want a great tourist guide who tells me stories and interact with me, I want that to be a person. I want that kind of human to human connection. When I want a concierge who really spends time to understand me and converse with me and uh, show that they care, or if uh, an elderly person uh, it needs someone to um, communicate, to talk to them, to pass the time, to um, listen to them, to see their children's photos and show an interest in their families. That cannot be done by an AI. No. Now, AI empathy, but it won't do a good enough job. And even if it does a pretty good job, people don't accept it. So I would argue that the number of service jobs will grow substantially. Mm human to human um, service jobs, jobs, service jobs where you're warm and your connections really matter and shine. So there will be new jobs created in that category. I would also argue that AI will create new jobs, but we don't exactly know what they are. Mm -hmm. For example, let's start from the top, right? People who do, there will be a new job category called um, robot repair mm -hmm. or wrong repair or AI repair, right? There will be a new job called um, 
people who um, who um, fix AI engines to make sure they're not biased and fair and explainable. There will be people who adjudicate complaints about AI and fix accountability. Um, there will be, of course, AI programmers. There will be people who will work with AI to write programs together, and the list goes on. There will actually be routine jobs created too. There will be people who label data wow. because it's critical for AI training. So there are many, many such jobs, and I can't enumerate most of them. It's like early days of the internet. If you want me to enumerate all the jobs created by the internet, I would have been guessed on, you know, uh, HTML designer, you know, e-commerce uh, website creator, that kind of thing I would be able to do. But I would never have guessed, you know, Uber driver to be mm -hmm. a job that was enabled by the internet. So when the technological revolution happens, many new jobs are created and many jobs are lost. Mm -hmm. So we just see, find that new job, become trained and catch on um, the, the growth path. And finally, I think there will be shifts in society. I think there will be um, maybe people will work fewer hours, maybe four days a week. So then there is enough work to go around. Maybe there will be recognition and reward for people who do things that are helpful to the society, but don't create direct economic value. So volunteering at an elderly home, you're making a lot of older people happier, and, and, but, but you're not creating economic value. Mm. Uh, such job is positive to society and maybe they should be paid for. So there's a way to, uh, to, to deal with that. So I feel with all of these things combined, there should be enough jobs to go around. And in addition to that, I do believe we still need in parallel to work on changing our view that the work is the essence of our lives. Mm. We all change our view on certain types of jobs that if service jobs are going to be a very big part of our employment globally, then their social status need to improve, right? People look down upon people. The social status of, let's say, an elderly caretaker is perhaps lower than that of a um, truck driver, but it really shouldn't be. And especially if you consider it the laws of supply and demand, in the future, there will be no more truck drivers. Trucks will drive themselves, but there will be a greater need for elderly caretaker because they're now more elderly. So there needs to be an orderly shift to give a well-deserved higher social status and higher pay to the service jobs. And these kinds of things need to happen in parallel. So I feel pretty confident we can solve the job displacement problem over time because there's so many ways in which things can evolve and improve. I like to argue that uh, Japan is a country of service excellence. We call it omotenashi, and people are so engaged in kind of emotional labor, which is at the same time a problem in Japan because that gives mental burden to young people that they have to always be communicative, always be friendly, always be easygoing, and they're less paid or sometimes not paid for such emotional work. So you made a point about mindset change. So how can we shift from a world when those kind of labor are not paid and also mental health issues that might happen in the future because people are so engaged and people are so concentrated on those social labor? Yeah, I, I'm, I've been to Japan many times, uh, really impressed mm -hmm. by incredible service uh, mentality of people and also by the volunteer spirit that's mm -hmm. in Japan. And I think is very much um, important in this new era uh, for that, for the rest of the world to learn that. Inclusion in one of the chapters I talk about, how do we solve these problems? And I feel the answer is we need to put all the countries in the world, all the citizens of the world together, take the best practices from their country and share and learn from each other. And the example I used was the focus service mentality in Japan. I also gave the example of the, um, um, uh, the, the Korean education 
mm -hmm. or I gave the example of the Chinese family value mm -hmm. and family together so they can be a unit. Mm -hmm. I talked about the uh, craftsmanship in Switzerland because it's not necessarily art, but this is something made by hand, you're proud of it and you can create value from that. So, um, and I, I talked about the volunteer volunteering that is in Japan and other countries. So I feel collectively, we have a lot of great ideas that one culture or one country has. And if we share them and, um, uh, and, and, and move forward, we'll all be better off. Mm. I also feel that you talk about um, uh, the mental stress of people. Yes. Mm -hmm. smile all day long, but they don't get paid very much. And, and I feel that um, in the future, people who smile a lot, I hope we can find a way that they do it from their heart, mm -hmm. not act. If it's an act, then it's, of course, um, tension. For, yes, for them. it's kind so, of peer pressure in Japan. You have to smile and be friendly always. Yeah, yeah. I think some kind of a change so that it's um, people should smile because it causes, uh, it's, infectious. it's infectious. You smile, someone else smiles, everyone's happy, then it's a good thing, right? As opposed to feel a peer pressure. Similarly, you talked about people who don't get paid enough for their volunteer or don't get paid at all. So I, I, I mentioned in the book, maybe that needs to change hmm. because it's enough for all, if the world is almost without poverty and hunger, we should pay people, uh, we should let people take on professions that don't generate economic value, but generate positivity in the society. So the volunteer jobs in uh, hospitals and elderly home, I think, I don't see why they shouldn't be, be paid for that. And I think there should be a higher recognition, social status and pay for people who are bringing in positive energy, helping other people, maybe they're not creating immediate economic value, but but I think the the importance of things will change because AI can help create economic value that we can all share, so that we the people can create more uh, better environment, more love, and uh, uh, more easy living, more happy lives that may be the division of work between humans and, um, and AI. Hmm. How will the economics will be? Who will pay for such jobs? Because unlike the industrial revolution, AI is not necessarily creating uh, new jobs, but kind of disrupting. So who will pay for that kind of emotional service or people smiling? AI is creating a lot of economic value because you know AI will make advertising five hmm. times making more money for the advertisers, the platforms, the companies. AI will make, you know, search engines will be so accurate that we find what we want instantly without going through answer after answer. AI can make a wonderful photograph or a piece of art in half a second, as opposed to taking weeks or months to iterate. So that efficiency and value creation will create economic value. That value today goes to the AI company or the internet company. So there probably should be some form of taxation hmm. where fiduciaries who, who make a lot of money from this technology should be taxed by the government. And that tax will create a something like a universal basic income that can be provided for people who are not well off or maybe even for, for everybody. But I also think it's not just giving free money to people who lost their jobs. I think people um, should have an incentive to learn, improve, and contribute to the world so that people who receive the universal basic income might be required to up-level themselves, to get jobs, to show their value uh, to the society. And, and also, I think in, there are some stories in the book that talk about um, reward systems to, improve, to, to encourage and incentivize a better behavior, and and hopefully um, there there could be. I hypothesize in the book that there can be some way to recognize who has injected positive energy and happiness, 
and that person might get some kind of a virtual currency um, for that, even though it's not economic value generating. So I don't know the final answers, but I think now is the time when we need to think about uh, we're entering an era where money is less and less scarce mm -hmm. because getting lots of money and value. What is scarce is that people are content and happy and learning and contributing and um, um, making the society better and of course creating economic value. Mm -hmm. So how to reward good behavior and incentivize right behavior uh, is something that uh, the society needs to do. And maybe the currency system needs to be changed. Maybe the social status and the levels of pay need to be modified and updated. Um, you know, throughout the history of mankind, that has happened many, many times. The, so I think this is just another time when we want to ask the question, what kind of society do we want? What kind of changes need to, are needed? Uh, how do we incentivize the right behavior? And what are the uh, social um, tools that can be used for that? Social tools might include currency, taxes, pay, social status, uh, and things like that. What about ChatGPT and DALI and stability diffusion? Entry-level people generally are increasingly replaceable by AI. Okay, I can't do any job that creates economic value, but I can make people happy. I can do something that's helpful to the society. You should be rewarded just like you are today. When quantum computing works, greater revolution than even artificial intelligence. It's going to be an incredibly disruptive period we will see how this evolves. How about Japan? Where I think Japan needs to find a way to improve is 